Well, I'd say basically it started with RCA and Bolinas. That's where, when I was 14 years old, I had access to the fifth big radio facility on the planet. And that, uh, that gave me what I needed to really move ahead, to get the experience and knowledge by having a full-size facility to work with and the engineers and technicians to help me understand. That's Tesla's Colorado Springs setup. So it was something which everybody's pretty familiar with that knows about Tesla. That was the, the thing that he used to resonate the earth. So the objective here was to build a 120th scale model so that that system could be studied to see how it transmitted and what its frequencies were and its bandwidths and transfer function and all that kind of stuff because it's a scale model. It's small, it's easy to deal with, you're not generating lightning bolts, you don't have to have a million dollars and find out how did this thing actually perform. By making it engineerable. Can you talk, can you? In other words, quantifying it and dispelling all of the uh, the false ideas that have been planted in the people's head about this stuff, which are rampant. No, the, ex the, the best example of that is Tom Bearden's Soviet scalar wave fantasies. That's probably one of the most destructive things to the understanding of Tesla that's ever been put out there. And it's my belief that it was deliberate. Somebody told me one time that to get involved with Tom Bearden was the kiss of death. And he'd always get his nose into everybody's project and then things would all fall apart. But he couldn't get his nose in my project. But when I encountered the guy, I already knew that, you know, that he was a turd. And then he immediately began to try to scare me away that, you know, that little spirits were going to appear and spooks and demons and what have you. And uh, I just turned my head and walked away. The guy was an idiot. Thought he could scare me. What kind of fool is he? It works. Tesla, yes. Yeah, it, it, it received the AM radio station. It did what Tesla intended it to do as a, a radio device, is it pulled in a distant AM radio station that without the transformer you couldn't receive. How far away was it? Mm, I don't know, I'd say maybe 50, 100 miles. So the signal here is fairly weak, particularly inside a building like that. No. You might just say it's just buried and it's, the whole thing is just drifted off course. Okay. So he Heaviside remarked in the beginning, because he didn't receive a university education, and that's why he could be so creative. It basically, his remark was it's no more than just to write a passage, brain torturing, to see how much they can harass you. You know, if you make it through the harassment, then you get a degree that shows you don't know anything. You have to be able to engineer it. And that's what you provide. Yeah, you have to be able to turn it into Ohm's law, so to speak. Until you can apply Ohm's law, you can't engineer it. You don't know how many turns. You don't know how far apart they're supposed to be. There's all these factors. You have to be able to engineer that. And that's what you provide. Right. Yeah. Down to the fine core. Yeah. And, and also a workable theory. Right. you got to have a workable theory. Physics doesn't offer any workable theories, just fantasies. And that's, can you talk about how you provide that? By going back to the people that gave us engineering and taking their material and adapting it to Tesla's work. Going to conferences like that. Or any, you know, it all depends. You know, being an electrical engineer, it might be applying it to some electrical problem in a factory or designing a machine like the MWO or something like that. That's what engineering is all about. Right. There's something you want to do, so how do you do it? And that's what people come to these How many pounds of copper? How many pounds of iron? You know, I mean, that's what you need to know. And then how are you going to cut it up? Caps. Yeah. Of those natures. Where do you get those kind of capacitors? You can't anymore. you got to make everything. Yeah, no one's really interested, but, you know, that's just what I do. You know, it's a phrase I use that people like. It doesn't matter how many times you kick the coyote in the head, it's still going to eat your chickens. It's just what I do. 
there's no motive or anything that I expect to be derived from it or it's just what I do. Yeah. It's like eat and take a shit. It's just <laughs> what I do. Right. There's no romanticism or glories or I'm not trying to change the world. Right. It's actually all this is doing is making things worse. I shouldn't be doing any of this at all because then people are going to misuse it, create a bunch of interference, get themselves in trouble and get all this stuff shut down because they're idiots. But outside of uh, using multi-wave, but what about the multi-wave oscillator? You've helped revive that, right? Can you talk about yeah. this? Yes, and they look beautiful. They look great. But we still don't know what they do or what they're actually doing. Even though there are books put out by Lukowski that goes through that. In the, you know, yeah, and it doesn't necessarily mean that Lukowski knew what he was doing either. How do we find it? Can we get a big... Well, you have to get a team of, of people that are capable of making the medical you know, or biological determinations and do the experiments. But uh, no one's really interested in doing that anymore. So it's out of my hands. Is, is my, you know, my part in this was to, to engineer it and make it into something that wasn't a piece of garbage that you know originally the way that uh, Lukowski had that thing hooked up it's an electromagnetic terrorist tool and the only thing it's going to do is get you in big trouble so I have to weed all of that out of there and get that thing so it did only what it was supposed to do and not you know burn out people's computers and cell phones and you know create radio interference or disrupt communications or whatever, all that had to be taken out of the equation, but it still had to do what Lukowski wanted it to do. Right. Do you well, somebody found a unit, and, uh, and a lot of the unknowns then had been dispelled, because before that, no one really knew. I, I was approaching from a different standpoint, because I, I was involved with the people that brought the whole Lukowski thing back to life. No one had remembered it. It was gone forever. And then there was a couple of people in Los Angeles. Uh, there's one name that's well known. It's Bob Beck. And uh, he started getting people to make these things and what have you. And people started building little toys with ignition coils. And there was a, a, a thing called Borderland Science that used to, uh, you know, they have like a little typewritten magazine thing. And they would give little diagrams and people would build these things. That's how the Lukowski idea came back to life, it all came out of the Integratron. That's what was the, what would you call, the rejuvenation or rediscovery of Lukowski, because the Integratron was based on that principle. So then, when Aaron wanted to start doing this, you know, there was all the usual, you know, people with all the little spooks and the misinterpretations and, you know, running this way and that way and making all these claims and all the interference and and I told Aaron, you know, you're got to get this thing, it's not safe, it's going to be making the interference, let's get this, let's get it done right. Okay. And he thought that was a good idea and so what I did is I, you know, did a normal, you know, just like uh, the Bureau of Ships, you know, okay, here we go, this is all, you know, the requirements that we have to meet as far as electromagnetic compatibility and safety and the type of waveforms that Lukowski was after, which are very difficult to handle, you know, that had to be all taken into account because you didn't really know what was going on, even though it seemed like you should change certain things, it wasn't a good idea to change it. So I had to kind of design circuits the way they weren't supposed to be designed to allow these components, you know, to get through to where they were supposed to go. So it, it took some figuring. Well, it was sure. one single objective was to quantify the Colorado Springs transformer. Okay. Basically, that's simple. And the next one after that? That was to show that uh, that seismic forecasting is engineerable and there's no reason that it shouldn't be implemented that is uh, reasonable. It's up to them. That's up to them. Yeah. Okay. I can't, I have no control over it. I just put the stuff out there. You know, you can yes. lay the food on the table if people want to eat it, if they want to throw it in the garbage, if they want to puke it up, that's, that's <laughs> there. I don't have any control over that. Right. No real discoveries. Okay. All right. I mean, on the mathematical level, 
you know, I mean, there's things I've discovered in the past year. Okay. Like but that, but that's not anything I can really. Talk, talk about well, that basic Tesla books were had been published. Yeah. Colorado Springs, all that. Right. You know, all my work is drawn out of, you know, the engineering work from like about 1890 to 1910. Mm -hmm. That was all used to be on all the library shelves. And then I had my facilities, either that I built myself or government or, you know, corporate mm -hmm. to apply things and learn from. Right. I didn't have any trouble.